Soho, a place synonymous with sex, music and hell raising. Or at least it was. I'm Ben Ashenden and over this series I'll be finding out if Bohemian Soho lives on or if it's gone forever. This week I'm with Tony Shuttle, a record exec, television producer, cabaret artist and wine merchant. That corner, that is where I first saw Keith Richards. Tony has been prowling Dean Street since the 60s. He's there now. I've never seen him before. Who better to compare today's Soho with the legendary neighbourhood of yesteryear? Now, this is interesting because this was the Atlantic Club, which was the place to come in the 60s and, and check out new bands. Right. And so when you came in the, in the 60s, what kind of bands were performing? Oh, gosh. Well, so, I mean, yeah. this was... It was 65, so you had people like um, Pop and Mikey, yep. uh, the Doolallys, oh, okay. Simon Geard, wow. the Bobsons. Wow, so a lot of, a lot of bands. Oh, all yeah. sorts. I mean, you know... Car Crash Carry Ons, yep. Frisbee Estate, Donald Eiselman. Well, yep. We're talking mid '60s. And then when those bands were, were the Make Believes, Purple yep. Tuesday, yep. Richard know, Donovan, yep. the Faces of Lads. We're talking '64, '65. The Ozones of the Hannah Banjos, and Crackles, you... Nice Swine, and the Dinkies. Trent Houlihan and his little lads. I had a hell of a good time with the Babcock Boys. Yeah. And so in this period, you would come. Henson's Retreat, the Duct Tape Mice. When you were coming to scout new acts, were you looking for their music or for their lyric? Oh, the music, like, the music, definitely. Right. Back then, you had chords like G major, C minor, A major, okay. B sharp, A flat major, and C diminished seventh. I mean, for crying out loud, we're talking about 65, so you had cats like A flat. Would you come to the Atlantic Club most nights? Oh, every it? night, yeah, every right. night. I mean, we, we would hop on a bus and swing on down, you know. Um, With sort of... Buses like the 24, 393, the 72, the 10, the N10, uh, the 8. The nine. But this was 65, so the 65. Okay. And you know, the funny thing is, yeah. is that even though that was so long ago, that same spirit of bohemian energy and creativity still lives on today. I mean, this is now a Chipotle. Not here, no, but, um, but nearby. Okay. Nearby is Chipotle. Okay. The Atlantic Club may be long gone, but Tony assured me that his other favourite haunts were still alive and well. When I first made the move to television, I took a lunch meeting here mm -hmm. with a young man who was making waves as part of a surreal and anarchic sketch troupe. And I was sitting in this window seat when the door opened and in walked a gangly young chap doing a rather silly walk. And he, oh, and, I well, and he sat down in front of me and he said, listen, I've got an idea for a sitcom. It's set in a horrible hotel. Right. So and I took one John, look at him. John, John Cleese. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it was sad. Uh, sorry. So you, uh, so go on. What, what, uh, what no, we, um, we had a meet, yeah, we had a meeting. I once, I once took breakfast here with two young women who were just starting out as a comedy double act. Two of the, uh, and, well, well, yeah. And they said to me, Tony, we've got a bit of a problem. It's our name. Why? What, and, what was well, that? I'm gonna, yeah. <clears throat> And they said, the issue, Tony, is that it makes people think we're something to do with France. Oh, French and so Saunders. Said, yeah, will you just let me do it? With a rubbery-faced comic who had a mole oh, on Rowan his... Atkinson. Forget it. What I'm interested in is, you know, do you still have friends in Soho now? Well, today? it depends whether you, whether you mean friends or enemies. <laughs> friends? I do, yes, yeah. On our way to see Tony's old friend, Eddie, we had time to soak up the sights and sounds of Soho. Old Compton Street, <laughs> Karl Marx's stomping ground, God bless him. How, uh, how, how political is Soho? Oh, it's hyper-political. Yeah. Storytelling, that, yeah, that's political. Yeah. Writing verse, that's political. You know, jo jo joining a political party, well, that's political. Yeah, well, definitely the last one. Mm. Yeah. I, I mean, how would you sort of fix the state of the country now? <laughs> I'd get every rocker and artist in this city in a room, and I'd lock them in with a bottle of Jack and an ounce of hash, and I'd tell them nothing's off limits. And in terms of an answer that isn't mad? Well, I think the tax system needs looking at. And the environment. Yeah, that's a proper theatre. Yeah. You know, I've always said theatre's a team sport. Yeah. It's, um, it's a contact sport too, but you know, that's, that's another story. What's the, why, what's the story? Uh, I, I once fell into an orchestra pit and broke my ankle, which was, which was fucking horrible. But uh, mind, mind, mind you, the old uh, boy who lived went through a few of I I issues of his own. I don't know mm. if you've seen any of that stuff, but um, yeah, yeah. Voldemort, it, it, absolutely appalling. Some of what he was up to was, was utterly horrible. Um, yeah. I didn't like him at all. I, I preferred the Weasley boys, um, who I thought had some good ideas. We're 
you're coming to the to the north end of Soho now, which is but for, for you, where does Soho end? It doesn't. It... No. I leave Soho. I carry it with me right here. I can get on a plane anywhere. But, but on a on a map. Well, I think it was Jonathan Swift who once wrote that a map is true in, in which one way. Which street? Oxford. And in that direction? Regents. So this is it. This is Ed's uh, Ed's pub. Oh, this so isn't we'll... a pub. This isn't a pub. Oh no, 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 no. I thought we were. It's a church. Church. The congregation, the regulars. The priest, the barman. Okay. The communion wine, the the wine, wine. and the and the other various drinks. And the pope himself. Well, that's Eddie. You stay here. I'll go make sure he's decent. Okay. <laughs> Um, uh, Eddie, uh, Eddie's passed off. Um, his, his daughter just, to, just told right, me that right, he's, yeah. he's died. So. Okay. Um, will they be? Will they be having this? I guess they could have a funeral in the church. What? No, it's, it's the pubs, the church. Naturally, the news of Eddie's death hit Tony hard, but it also seemed to prompt in him some deeper realisation. So, Tony, after everything we've seen today, don't you think that the only conclusion really you can draw is that the old Soho has indeed sort of gone? Yes, I, I think, to be honest, that you're, you're right. Yes, it's, um, it's changed completely. It's transformed beyond recognition. Um, it's evolved. And you know what? That's exactly why it's still the same old Soho. Not really. No, I don't think so. No, not really. No, today's been a, a bit of a wake-up call. I feel, I feel like blooming Draco Malfoy when he was in a situation that was, um, that, that was a, a bit of a wake-up call. Thank you very much, Thank Tony. You. Thank it's you, been mate. It's a pleasure. Yeah. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll see. Are you all right getting okay. home? Uh, not really. <laughs>